This is module three, lesson four, intercepts of graphs. After this lesson, you need to be able to identify the intercepts of functions and intervals where functions are positive and negative, and you need to be able to solve equations by graphing. Let's learn intercepts of graphs of functions. The x-intercept is the x-coordinate of a point where a graph crosses the x-axis. On the graph that's shown here, there are three x-intercepts because the graph crosses the x-axis three times. So we would say the x-intercepts are at negative four, negative two point something, and maybe around 0.25. But there are three of them because it crossed three times. The y-intercept is the y-coordinate of a point where it crosses the y-axis. For a function, it should only have one y-intercept. So where an x-intercept may have more than one, it should only have one y-intercept. If it doesn't, that would mean that a vertical line went through more than one point when x was zero, so it wouldn't actually be a function anymore. Then a function is positive when its graph lies above the x-axis. So if here's our x-axis, positive is anything above it. So this little like hill here is where it's positive and that part of the arrow there is positive because those parts are above the x-axis. Negative is when it's below the x-axis. There are two areas where it's negative. We have this part here, where it's going down, it's below the axis, and we have this kind of like valley area where it's below the axis. So positive and negative are all about if it's above or below. Example one, intercepts of the graph of a linear function. Use the graph to estimate the x and y intercepts of the function and describe where the function is positive and negative. So first let's identify our intercepts. The x-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. So down here. What point is that? That is at three, zero. So our x-intercept, we could say three, zero, or we could just say the x-intercept is three. This graph only has one of them. The y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, so up here, at zero, six. Or for the y-intercept, we can just say six. Now, where is the function positive and where is it negative? So we need to look at the axis. So here's our axis. Positive is gonna be anywhere above that. So it doesn't switch until it hits that x intercept. So when x is less than that, so anything where x is less than three, it's positive. So when you're writing this, you're thinking about where the x values are, not the y. A function is negative when it's more than three, because once it gets to three, it switches, and now then it's below and it would keep being below as x gets larger. Check your understanding. Use the graph to estimate the x and y intercepts of the function and describe where it's positive and negative. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First of all, your x-intercept is up here at negative two, zero. So negative two, zero, zero, negative six, not that one. Negative two, zero, zero, negative six, not that one. So we're left with a and c. Let's check our y-intercept. It's at zero, negative six. So that didn't help us, both of them are the same. So now we're gonna look where it's positive and negative. So it switches at that x-intercept. So it's gonna switch at negative two. It's positive before negative two and negative after. So which one's showing that it's positive before negative two or less than negative two? That would be C. When x is smaller than negative two or when x is less than negative two, it's positive. And then once it gets to negative two and now as x gets larger, it switches to below. Example two, intercepts of the graph of a nonlinear function. Again, we're gonna estimate the intercepts and describe where it's positive and negative. So this time, there are two places for x-intercepts. We have one at negative four and one at three. The y-intercept is down here, where it crossed the y-axis at about negative 12. It's positive when it's over here, and then it's positive again when it's over here. Those are the two places that it's above. So when it's to the left of negative four, so less than negative four, and when it's to the right of three, so when x is greater than three. It's negative when it's between those two things. So between negative four and positive three. If you noticed in the last example and in this example, your boundaries of when something switches to positive and negative should match. So here it was positive until negative four, then it's negative, starting at negative four, all the way to positive three. Then it's positive after three. So the numbers kind of work together. 
because we're dealing with a continuous function here. Check your understanding. Use the graph here to determine if the points listed are either the x-intercept, y-intercept, or neither, and then describe when it's positive or negative. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. First one, one, zero. That point is there. That is an x-intercept. Zero, one is right there. That would be neither. Not on the graph. If it asks for other x-intercepts, we have one at four, zero, and our y-intercept is at zero, negative four. All right, when is the function positive and when is it negative? Well, it's positive between one and four. So positive between those two. Positive between one and four. So we're left with C or D. And then it's negative before one and negative after four. So negative before one and after four, our answer must be D. If it helps you, see how I just wrote the numbers? of the x-coordinate, those are the numbers that you're going to use for positive and negative, so 1 and 4. Example 3, find intercepts from a graph. Our real context is sports. The graph shows the height of a ball for each second x that it's airborne. Use the graph to estimate the x and y intercepts of the function, where the function is positive and negative, and interpret the meanings in the context of the situation. Our x-intercept is over here, is at 9. So what that would mean, if we are picturing this as the flight path of the ball, that is when it's going to hit the ground at nine seconds. The y-intercept is over here on the y-axis. It is at four. That means at time zero, so when we start, the ball was at a height of four feet. The function is positive. So here's our axis determined if it's positive when it's between zero and nine seconds. This would tell us that it was in the air for nine seconds. And then no portion of this graph is negative because that would make sense. If you're throwing a ball, it's going to hit the ground and not really ever be able to go negative. Check your understanding. Read through the situation. Determine the x and y intercepts. And then what do they mean in context? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. So first, our x-intercept is over here at 12, 0. And our y-intercept is at 0, 20. If you notice, they were counting every two lines was 40, so they must have been counting by 20s. Then, what is the meaning of the intercepts? Select all. So there were 20 people when it opened. That one is true. At zero time, there were 20 people. The gym closed after 20 hours. Uh, I'm going to guess that it closed at 12 hours because now there's no people there. So not that one. I'm going to say it closed. And then there were 12 people when it opened. Now we just said it was 20. So A and C. 20 people when it opened, and it closed after 12 hours. Example four, find intercepts from a table. Our real context here, lunch. Violet starts the semester with $150 in her student lunch account. Each day, she spends $3.75 on lunch. The table shows the function relating the amount of money remaining in her lunch account to the number of days Violet has purchased lunch. So first, let's find our intercepts. The x-intercept is where y is equal to zero, so down here. That would mean that our intercept is 40. So the x when y is zero, x-intercept is 40. Opposite of that, the y-intercept is where x is equal to 0, so it would be 150. Part B, describe what the intercepts mean in the context of the situation. So the x-intercept would mean that she could buy lunch for 40 days. So after buying lunch for 40 days, she will have no money left in her account, or it will take her 40 days to use all of her money in her account. The y-intercept, where she started, she has $150 after buying lunch for zero days, or the beginning balance is $150. So the x and y intercepts here in these contexts mean that you have all of one of the things and none of the other. So here, our x intercept, she used all of her days and no longer has any money. Our y intercept, she has all of her money and hasn't used any of the days yet for lunch. Check your understanding, read through the situation and answer both parts using the table. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, the y-intercept is 0, 90. So that's when x equals 0. And then our x-intercept is when y equals 0. So it would be 10. So I want 10, 0 is my x-intercept. So either A or C. And then what does the x-intercept mean? After 10 trips, so I'm just using the title of this, 10 trips, her balance is 0. 
So the initial balance was 10, or after 10 trips, there will be no money left. Must be C. She did not start with $10. After 10 trips, there's no money left. Let's learn. Solving equations by graphing. The solution or root of an equation is any value that makes the equation true. A zero is the x-intercept of the graph of the function. As we go forward, you're going to see that solutions, roots, and zeros are other words that also mean x-intercepts. And they all give you the same value. So for example, the root of 3x equals 6 is 2. A linear equation like 3x equals 6 has at most one root, where a nonlinear equation like x squared plus 4x minus 5 may have more than one. In the table, we can see that we took our equation and made what is called a related function. We're going to look at how to do this next. But why this is important is the graph of the related function can be used to find the solutions of an equation. The related function is formed by solving the equation for 0 and then replacing 0 with f of x or y, and then graphing it. Values of x for which f of x equals 0 are located at the x-intercepts of the graph and are called the zeros of a function. The roots of an equation are the same as the zeros of its related function. The solutions and roots of an equation are the same value as the zeros and x-intercepts. So long story short, they all mean the same thing. If you notice here, 2 is the solution to 3x equals 6, 2 is the root of 3x equals 6, 2 is the 0 of f of x equals 3x minus 6, and 2 is the x-intercept of f of x equals 3 minus 6. No matter what, we're going to get 2 as an answer. So example 5, solve a linear equation by graphing. Solve 2x plus 7 equals 1 by graphing. Check your solution. First, we got to find the related function. So we need to get something equals 0. The quickest way to do this is just subtract 1 off of each side. So on the left side, we have 7 minus 1, which is 6, and then 1 minus 1 is 0. So we got one side equal to 0. Now we can replace this 0 with f of x. So the related function is f of x equals negative 2x plus 6. Then when we graph it, it intersects down here at 3. That's your x-intercept, or 0, or root, or solution. So the answer is 3. We could also check by solving algebraically. If we wanted to solve this, we could subtract 7 from both sides and get negative 2x equals negative 6. Dividing by negative 2, we get 3. The same thing works for nonlinear equations. If we're solving this, first we find the related function by getting one side equal to 0. So here the fast way is just to add 3. Now it's equal to 0. So the related function, f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. And we can graph that. Here they're given the graph. It intersects at 1 and 3. So 1 and 3. So the solutions must be 1 and 3. For any of these, if they don't already have it graphed for you, you can always go over to Desmos and type in your function. So here's the function they gave us in example 6. Notice I didn't rearrange it for the related function. I just typed it in. We saw that the answer should have been 1 and 3. If you notice, when I type in our original function, it gives me two lines because it has two solutions. Where did that graph cross? It crossed at 1 and 3. If we were to rearrange it into our related function, we can get the actual graph and notice it still is crossing at 1 and 3. So either way, we're getting the same solutions to our equation or the same roots. Example 7. Solve an equation of a horizontal line by graphing. Solve 4x plus 3 equals 4x minus 5 by graphing. Check your solution. So first, let's find the related function by getting one side equal to 0. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides and get 8 on the left, then subtract 4x, and I end up with 8 equals 0. Now I can replace 0 with f of x, so my related function is f of x equals 8. Now we can graph this. We end up with a horizontal line that is 8 units up. To find our solutions, though, we are looking for where we have our x-intercepts. This graph does not have any x-intercepts. It does not intersect the x-axis. So there's no x-intercept, and therefore, there is no solution. If we go back, we could have known right away there was no solution because our variable canceled out, and we did not end up with a true statement. So this one would have no solution, and we saw that on the graph. Check your understanding. There are three graphs of equations here. First, write the related function for each graph. Then write the zero or zeros for each graph. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. For the first one, the related function is negative 1 half x plus 2, and the 0 is 4. If you said that the related function was 1 half x minus 2, you'll get the same answer. For the middle one, the related function is f of x equals 5, and there's no solution because it does not cross the x-axis. And on the last one, f of x equals 
x squared minus x minus 6, and the zeros are at negative 2 and positive 3.